At six in the morning, Shatu Abdu Ali leaves her home in Fedis, Ethiopia, to walk 12 kilometres to the local market. Her mission is simple, to sell enough firewood packed on the back of the family donkey to pay for a meal to feed her family of seven before the end of the day. Waiting back in the village with their five children, Ali, 12, Kima, 8, Hawa, 14, Fio, 9, and Mohammed, 4, her husband, Gabriel, explains the family predicament. I was born here as was my mother and father and my grandparents. My family has always lived around this area. None of my family have ever faced the situation we now find. There used to be plenty of rain and we did not have to work hard to get the crop to eat. These days we work hard but still we can't grow enough crops. We don't know why. This is from God. Right now we don't have any food in the house. My wife left early this morning to walk to the nearest town to sell some firewood in exchange for food. We will wait for her to return at night so we can eat. Yali's neighborhood does not fit an outside imagination of a district wanting for food. Tall sorghum plants surround the small mud homestead, giving the impression of lush, green, bountiful farmlands. But Fedis is currently Ethiopia's most food insecure district, according to the World Food Programme. Okay, well, I think one of the um, issues in Ethiopia is population pressure on the land. So the average land holding is quite small in some areas and doesn't necessarily produce enough for, for families to, be, to support themselves for the entire year. But we also have the fact that there, um, it isn't that there's one harvest in the year. So people depend on either two or three kind of harvests that, that would get them through the year. So normally um, in the bell, in the, in the mid-year harvest, they would produce a certain amount of food and that would carry them through to when the next harvest should be. So it's possible to have quite a good harvest at one point, but not to get the next harvest or not to have had a previous harvest. The Horn of Africa has suffered its worst drought in 60 years. And although the seasonal rains are now starting to arrive, in Ethiopia, 4.5 million people are still reliant on direct aid to survive, according to the UN. Last week, the first of a series of Chinese food shipments arrived in Ethiopia to help the local government deal with the shortfall of food aid. Although there'll be a harvest soon, the seasonal rains that were due last month were much less than forecast and the water resources for the area are depleting quickly. We have crops around us, as you can see, but these crops only supply us food for a very short time. And if it does not rain two or three times in the coming weeks, we will lose these crops too. For water, we have dug a large pond about 10 minutes walk away from here, where my wife and children go to collect water. When this run out, we have to walk to another village half an hour away. If that run out, we have to walk three hours to the nearest water. The water is brown and dirty, but we add purifying tablet to government give us before we drink it. Until the rain return, our only hope is from God and from the government to feed us. The lack of rain has put the price of foodstuffs up in the local market, adding to the difficulty in accessing the food. In the town where Shatu is selling the firewood, the markets are buzzing with activity, with no shortage of food on sale. Food security for the alleys is more about the ability to access the food rather than its availability. The worse the drought, the higher the prices, the harder it is for the alleys. As the sun was about to set, Shatu returned home from her six-hour round-trip walk, clutching a bottle of oil, some gasoline and a bag of maize. She immediately began the preparations for the evening meal. Since the Ethiopian famines of 1973 and 1984, the country has built infrastructures that enable them to work closely with international humanitarian organisations to both predict and deal with food crisis as it arises. The Chinese donation, though only a part of a larger international aid effort, will allow families like the Alleys to remain secure in their homes for the foreseeable future.